morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, beautiful friends. Hello. It's me, Robin. I'm Jeff. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Magic. We're wishing you a beautiful good morning. Hello, hello, hello. He was off key. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You are loved and cherished. Good morning. Okay, that was nice. Thank you. He just came in from a walk. So, I said, come say hi. Come say hi to our posse. Come say hello to everyone. Hello, posse. Hello, posse. A little different for us usually, right? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hi, beautiful and amazing friends. This feels like such a special day. Um, I'm so excited to get to come and see you and be with you and share with you and shine with you. And this is our time to be together. So I want to say a big hearty hello. Hearty hello. And tell you I love you and tell you you're beautiful and that, you know what? This life is precious and sacred. So let me say hi to you. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hi, Michelle, first one here. Hi, Melanie, first one here. Hello, you came in at the same time. Hello. Hi, Amy, good morning. Hi to number one, good morning. <laughs> hello, Studio Playa. Hi, Josie, good afternoon. Hello, Miss Allie. Hello, hello, hello. I have your magic blankie right here. So good. Thank you. Hi, Carol. Good afternoon. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Mary. Good morning. Hello. Hi, Roshni. Hello. Yes, happy Saturday. Happy weekend. Um, <clears throat> Jeff just is in from a little walk. That's why I said, come say hi to everybody. <laughs> and he's going to make some tea and join us in a minute. And I have a cup of yum yum. I love this. This is like the cup of the wizard, you know, the cup of the uh, seer. I feel like the seer today. Um, <laughs> that's the fan, I promise. <laughs> the fan, the seer with that going on, the seer with the fan. So hello, hello, hello. Um, whenever I have this cup, I grab it and it's like I'm starting to figure out it's more of a mood like a special mood. So you're getting the special mood today. So I say we cheers. Cheers to this life. Cheers to our awakening. You know, hi, you're awake. You're deep, right? You're real. You're not like anybody else. Let us celebrate that today, please. Cheers. Mmm. When you're all grown up, you can have as much coffee as you want. And that's the best part. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Beautiful friends, I'm just going to put our little title here. We are called the Morning Magic Posse, you know. And you are this posse. You are a cherished member of this posse. Did you know? So friends, how are you? Did you sleep well last night? Did you... um? You know, rest well. Did you have a fun Friday night? Did you do fun things? I hope so. I hope it wasn't just work, 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 work. Right? And did you hug yourself today? I'm hugging myself right now. I am. I'm doing it right now. See? Hug myself this morning. And, you know, do you ever notice how you're on your awakening journey? and you have themes that are going on for you, like things that you're waking up to. Do you ever notice that? Like, wow, this week has really been about this theme for me. And I would say this week has really been about receiving for me, receiving. So that's what I'd like to talk to you about today, dear friend, <laughs> dear listener, um, receiving because you, would like to receive as well. And we've been talking about miracles here. Yesterday I mentioned that there's no order of difficulty in miracles. There, One is not harder than another. 
all miracles are maximal in their output of love. And um, Amy, good morning, Amy. Amy wrote, other Amy, Amy Church, not other Amy, <clears throat> Amy Church of the amazing California Amy's, um, wrote and said, I'm really thinking about this miracle thing. You know, a button or a castle is what Abraham says. It's not, it's not harder to manifest a castle than it is a button. Only thinking makes it so. So that's sort of where I'm at this morning. I hope you're grooving along with that too. Grooving along, are you? Are you? Good morning, number one kiddo and other number one kiddo. Is she also in the house? Please advise. Hello, Stuart, beautiful. Good things are happening in our lives, you guys, and I am so excited for you. When you share your news, I'm so thrilled for you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited. It's wonderful. You are worthy and deserving of the magic in your life, and receiving is part of this practice. Okay? Is this resonating for anyone? So, I was on to, were you hugging yourself yet? Did you do it? Oh, here's number one husband. Hello. Good morning. <clears throat> Thanks for playing with me. Singing on here, Jeffy. For those of you who got here a few minutes after we began, Jeff was here saying hello, and he sang the good morning song. We kind of sounded like a dirge, actually, to be honest, but that's okay. <laughs> the love was there. So I hope my signal's good. Usually you're more chatty than this, friends. Um, hug, 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 hug. And then I want to know what your word of the day is. I want to know what your word of the day for today is. Or if you're going to pick one later, that's cool. I really like when we do that after we've discussed. Hello, Miss Caitlin Beauty Heart Sparkler. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, Miss Carrie. Hello, hello, hello. So, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you. Now you guys are, I don't know if it was my signal or what. Hello, good morning, good morning, friends. Allie has a clear word today, and it's called love. Amen. That so fits you. That so suits you. That's beautiful. Love. Carol's word is serve. That's beautiful. Melanie's word is see. Ooh, I love that. Let us see. Good morning. Jeff's word of the day is appreciate. And Jeff also says, I woke, I hugged, I made coffee, and I saw hockey. You know what's amazing? Jeff had a whole, um, what do you call it? A whole experience just for him from spirit this morning. I just posted this morning a little snippet about miracles when when special things happen for us the way what spirits really saying like I see you I love you you're amazing I'm proud of you you're doing good things and I'm with you I'm holding your hand I'm holding your hand like God's like hello I'm holding your hand take my hand that's God's hand I'm um, take my hand I love you I'm pleased I'm proud I'm here and it's funny because I think all of us do this where we're like, well, what's it mean? What's it about? Where's my stuff? Some of us are like, where's, my yeah, but it's not a motorboat. <laughs> Does it have an outboard on it? Then it's not really a miracle, you know? But we get these little messages like 1111. I think that's the one I posted. Yesterday was a fun day because it kept happening. Every time I looked, there was something cute. And could we dance in the energy of that? So Jeff had a hawk visit, and it danced in the yard for him. It got into, do you remember Sonny and Cher? They're, they're long gone. I think once the babies are born, you know, they're just on their way again. I hope that's all that happened. You know, they're just, they moved back to Acapulco. And, um, but we keep her pond going because all the other animals love it now. So Hockey got in the pond and had a little bath, and then he or she got in the tree right outside where we sit for coffee, and it was just a whole dance just for Jeff. I mean, that's the first time 
in years that's ever happened. You know what I mean? So when those things come for you, they're for you. And let's not, I was going to say, let's not waste time wondering what it means or, um, but that sounded kind of harsh and I don't ever want to sound like that, you know, <laughs> but it's like, let's just decide this is for me. This is special just for me. And the message is one of love, right? Isn't that beautiful? Hold on. I have to wipe my eye. I'm right here next to you. <laughs> I'm back. I, I, I put a little sunscreen on, you know, and sometimes it runs into my eye. No, I don't like it. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm going to go back to your words. Jeff says, hi, beautiful Carrie. <laughs> Mary says, sorry, friends, moving about. Mary, your intention is calm and centered. Hugs. I love that. That's perfect. So beautiful. Amy says, I had a miracle yesterday. One of my daughters who's not been speaking to me complimented my art on Instagram. It made my heart feel so good. <gasps> that is a miracle. You know, stuff, stuff with daughters and sons, our children, it can be so intense. And I know this too, because I'm a daughter, you know, um, I can speak so clearly about that from the perspective of daughter. I never thought about what my mom was going through. I didn't care. I only thought about myself. I only thought about me. And, um, you know, when I would be upset or punishing, I would direct it at her, my energy. Now, we didn't have the best thing, and she definitely... <laughs> I am not not trying to sound, um, I don't know, but I wouldn't have given her a huge pass as a mother either. Even as a healer now who helps people, I would say she really... <sighs> she needed to work on it. I'll just say it that way. Um, <laughs> big time. I'll add that too. Exclamation point. Okay. But I think kids don't realize how deeply some of this stuff hurts, how much it pains us, how it cuts. And I'm telling you this because what if we woke up to the mirror that we were kids once too, and we did stuff too, maybe not to our parents, maybe we did it we did it with friends, we cut them out, gave them the cold shoulder, or just took in a moment... We took our energy out on somebody else. And, you know, think about that. Just flip things around. Sometimes you're filled with remorse, are you not? I'm not just talking to one of us here, by the way. Okay? Never feel like I'm just directing this at you, who, who mentioned something I, I got going on. <laughs> um, you're just helping bring this energy forward. So when we flip it around and we sometimes realize how much remorse we are carrying about stuff we've done or said, how much we would love to be forgiven, how much we want to be forgiven, the way it's kept us up at night sometimes, our deepest pain about somebody else, about what we did, what we said. Then when our daughter isn't speaking to us for long periods of time and our heart is breaking, and I know that pain too, by the way. We can practice holding compassion. We can practice receiving. We can practice waking up. You know, it's a better alternative than beating ourselves up or hating on the other person or leaving another voicemail or another phone call, you know. We can practice. The courtesy extends both ways. You are free. This is my practice. You are free to be where you're at with this. And I am free to be where I'm at with this. And that frees us up to explore. What else do I need to look at here? Can I remember a time when I was the daughter and I wasn't speaking to her? And let me consider what if she felt broken, devastated, heartbroken. 
What if she wished one more time, just once, to be forgiven, to have another chance? Am I making anybody cry out there? I mean, I feel like it's really deep. You know, sometimes we frame people. Paul Selig talks a lot about framing things. We frame and all we see is what's inside the frame. Just this. But there's so much more going on all the way out, you know. All we see is the frame. What's inside there? How can we help ourselves today? And if this isn't your issue, just flip it around. Put your issue into the story I'm telling today. How can I go beyond this? You know? So, it can be intense. And when I started to do this work, this is actually how I came to The Course of Miracles, by the way, through this very thing that Amy just mentioned here. I started practicing. And again, nobody knows how your heart breaks. Nobody knows, but you know. And if we're really deciding to be our own friend, to hold our own hand, so much of this journey you have to walk alone. And nobody will know but you what this has been like. The pain. You know? So you come to your studies through that. You come to your awakening through that. You find morning magic through that. You get sober through that. Whatever your journey leads you to, then we just can say hallelujah. And in some kooky way, eventually we can thank the situation that broke our hearts, trashed us in the night. You know, that feeling like devastated, laid, laid open. We can finally come to a thank you for that. You know, and it's all for us. And you may find some miracles. Because, you know, the kids are here now every day. My, our kids are here every day, most days. They're probably listening right now. And how the hell does that happen? You know, yeah, staying present and loving yourself through it and including yourself in the journey. That makes me cry. You guys matter so much. I hope somebody needed to hear that today. <laughs> yeah. Jeff says, that's so great, Amy. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. So I'll go back to your words now. Um, Stuart's word is discover. Exactly. Beautiful. What are we discovering? You know? My word is receive, by the way. I'm going to receive all the blessings today. I've had so many gorgeous things happen this week. Learning how to take that in. Huge. Josie's word is kind. That's beautiful. Kind. Caitlin, my word can, will continue to be serve. I'm feeling more of a let go of things not serving me vibe today. It's so important. It's so important and it's that's part of the process. Like it doesn't serve me to stay here frozen in this story, you know? Um, how can I, I was sharing yesterday, we had a beautiful healing circle. Hi to those of you who joined me. Wasn't that lovely? I don't wanna put that on you, but I felt like such a deep healing from even holding space in that circle for all of us. It was powerful and we're gonna do that again so I'm not bringing this up. Nobody feel left out. You will be invited again, just FYI, okay? But um, I shared there, my word was commitment. The energy I wanted to bring forward in the circle was commitment because I am so tenderhearted sometimes and sensitive that I can talk myself out of wanting to come here and share or doing the podcast. And I wish I wasn't like that. You know, I do. But um, I understand, maybe it's just part of my beingness. So um, to say it doesn't serve me, Caitlin, you're reminding me, good God. I can't look in the camera, it's so red. Um, but to realize like it, it doesn't serve me to say I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna stop, I can't do it. 
that's one thing. Part of my commitment is I'm not telling that story anymore. I'm not allowing myself to go there because um, I don't believe it's true. And I don't think it comes from my essential self. I think it's ego doing that, trying to dig a wedge, you know? So it's so good when you decide to practice, you make progress. When you say, I, even though it feels so real. What What's going on for you now? Try this on. Even though this feels so real, you know what? I'm not going to tell that story again because it doesn't serve me. It doesn't bear fruit. <laughs> it doesn't bear fruit. So, yeah, compassion, Amy's word. Perfect. Fresh month, fresh me from Roshni. That's gorgeous. Jeff says, I think in my head, I want a miracle in the form of money. But when I stop and center, the miracles are everywhere. Today it was a hawk visiting. I can't, I'm like so excited to hear you say that. Because we were talking about this a little bit this morning, weren't we, Jeffy? That miracles, um, I was saying, what is all... Uh, what does the word maximal mean to you, Jeff? Because I get a little hung up on that where the Course in Miracles says all out, outputs of love are maximal. And he said it, it's like the capacity to fill something is it can fill it all the way. It can go all the way. So um, back to what Amy was asking or comment saying. It was actually text. Sorry, Amy. I hope you don't mind. Um, I don't really get it. You know, the difference between a button and a castle, all outputs of love are maximal, meaning how are you taking it in? How are you drinking it in? Full, all the way, full on? Are you remembering it? Or are you like next, next, next? You know, you're walking down the beach, picking up rocks, tossing them, next, next. A lot of us really have to see that our worthiness crap is in the way of our miracles. And the miracles don't stop. They're coming all the time. So you might see 1111 or 333. Somebody might say to you the very thing. Yesterday, do you know, several of you emailed me after our healing circle and you were like, that this phrase you said, oh my God, that was exactly for me. That's your miracle. So we shouldn't be wondering, you know, like shouldn't, you know what I mean? I don't mean like you're not doing it right, but this is my miracle. Just stop there and shh. This is my miracle. Oh my goodness. This is my miracle. Show me some, show me some love. Show me some miracles. Let me know. What are you dealing with right now? Are you struggling with anything? You know, when I go down that path of quitting and, you know, it's never about you. This love we have is so important to me. But, you know, sometimes I go down that path of quitting, thinking I'm a loser. That's the story. It's like I have nothing to offer. Um, that's what I, when I offer a prayer, I'm like, help me see that it's not true. And things come like you send me little presents come in the mail um little things today i posted one in my stories it was amazing actually that somebody took the time to write the sweetest card and put a 100 dollars bill in and say 100 podcast episodes and i was like wow <laughs> you know like that's amazing it gave me an opportunity to see um Talk about a body of work. I did that. I stayed present. I didn't miss. I didn't quit. You know what I mean? And um, I hope that you also will work on, it's not that, was it Susan Lucci or Sally Field taking the uh, Academy Award? You like me, you re or the Emmy. You love me, you really, really love. I think it was Sally Field. It's not about that. It can be initially, just it's so helpful to know people like you and they love what you're doing. But after a while, I hope that energy shifts for you to, I am of service and I am offering light and 
I ma it matters. I'm stepping in and I feel good, you know? Like the universe is pleased with my progress. You know what I'm saying? I hope this is resonating for you today. So Jeffy, you got this, you didn't just get a hawk, you know, and Jeff, think about the other night, we were at the kid's house, weren't we? And we had a hawk there too, do you remember? And she just, I don't know if that's a girl or a boy or what, girls, your hawk there, but she was in the tree too, and then she stood on the fence and let herself be photographed. I mean, we were like close to this hawk. So perhaps that's something for Jeff to explore, you know? <laughs> Hi, Ellen. Amy says that's so very helpful, thank you. Yeah, good, I'm glad. I appreciate you sharing your story. Amy, uh, California Amy says, I was so mean to my mom because I was defending my dad. Years after my mom died, I ran into her best friend and she said, you know, she always knew you loved her. And it was then that I knew my mom was a person too. Yeah, those awakenings are can be intense. You know? Yeah. I remember, I still think about stuff like that too, where you run into someone, they're like, your mom, you know, good, good. And if it, sometimes these things, they do cut like a knife. You know that song, cuts like a knife, but it feels so right. <laughs> Was that Brian something? Um, but we need to hear it so we can move through to the next piece. We don't, we deserve to not hang here in the same place with the same story. I, years ago, a client, um, my very first ever client, I've told this story. I don't want to bore you. If you take light worker love or the healing practitioner course, I tell it there, you know. But my very first client, she worked with me um, 20 years and she just died. And um, she never quite made it past this point with her daughters. And it was so difficult that her daughters did things like moved away and wouldn't tell her where they lived. You know, it was so intense. And I worked with the mother. Um, so, so challenging. She, she would cry and that's what I did. I held her, I hugged her. I reminded her of her worthiness. And yes, we looked at her behavior. There was a lot going on there. It was intense. You know, some, if you have any narcissistic wounding in your history or any people in your life um, where you know the crazy that people can bring sometimes, you, you know, you get it. But if you never experience it, you just can't imagine what, what lengths people go to to get out of a situation like that, you know, to save their own lives, that they would move away and not leave an address and have to keep cutting off um, somebody. And I'm not talking about anybody here, I'm talking about my past client who passed away without resolution, but she made enormous progress within herself and I saw it and, um, after she died, in fact, I wasn't even, I didn't even know she had died, you know? That's how, sometimes as the healer, it really sucks, I'm gonna say, because you don't really get to be part of all of it. You're there to hold space, and that's the boundary, and then you have to step out, and you don't know everything, you know? And it's not ethical to keep checking in, going, tell me what happened when you did this, and that. it's not, so I don't, you know? But sometimes that's really hard really hard because I care. So um, I heard about it through another friend. You know how co-workers find out about this one healer in town and then they're like, you got to go see her for a reading. And so you get to know people who work together. So somebody else texted me and said, isn't that too bad about so-and-so that she died? Did you hear? And I was like, I did not hear. Well, months later, one of the daughters messaged me on Facebook, who I've never met, and I seriously doubt even knew I was their mom's 
person, you know? And it was bizarre because, I don't know if you, any of you know that I used to make sacred healing jewelry. This was part of what I did along with my healing practice. And um, yeah, so they were like, we were wondering if you would be able to make a sacred healing rosary for like our aunt about our mom and with these pieces of jewelry. And I was like, this is so bizarre. They have no idea that for 20 years, you know, I've been holding her and loving her and helping her look at herself, help herself go on being, even though they wouldn't speak to her anymore and all of that, you know? And it's like, yeah, I, I don't think you have the right person. <laughs> I don't, that's not what I do. And that's it. Not, I knew your mom or any of that, but isn't that amazing? Yeah. So Melanie says, I could only find a future with my mom when I let go of our past, our past. Forgiveness extended. It was a long but worth it journey. Amen. And you know, these are the friends you want to have, the ones who are working the journey, not just telling the spit, spitty, spit fire, horrible stories over and over. You want the ones who are willing to step in and call it our journey. That's beautiful. Carrie says, my word is kind as in kind to myself in the moments when I'm frustrated. Melanie, see the miracles. I prayed this morning for the sight to see, to take away the scales and let me see. It immediately filled me with such gratitude. <sighs> you know, amazing grace. That is so beautiful. How we see, how we open and see, and suddenly we realize it's amazing. Stuart says, knowing how to decide when to persist or when to let go is an intuitive skill that I'm continually working on. Yeah, and that's the beauty of it is staying present with those things, staying present. Um, eventually, you recognize the nuance and, you know, that you never give up is amazing and beautiful. And let's hold on to our worthiness today. You know, let's hold on to our worthiness. So I said I wanted to talk a little bit about receiving. I'm going to start a healing and just offer some words from spirit about receiving. If you're not interested in a healing um, or it's not the right time or whatever, no problem. Just do this in front of your face, okay? And you'll be covered. Um, so receiving is an energy where I, I become present in the moment now. I soften in my body and I allow my energy to open to what is here now. One of the wildest things about that is I can't be thinking about what I need to do next or be in a hurry. I can't be carrying my pissed off story about last night or the day before or this person who was jippy with their love that day. You know, we all have, we're all having these things that happen. So it's not a big deal. Right? It's not a big deal. But to be present, you know, you can't receive if you're not present. So practicing bringing yourself into presence, and that means also releasing your outcome wish. You know, like Jeffy says, I, I wish for a million dollars, or I wanted it, in, Jeff said, in a monetary form. So he's learning to open to the hawk now. He's learning to open to the hawk and see that that too, it's a, it's, you know, all expressions of love are maximal, meaning that can fill you, has the capacity to fill you the same way your ego thinking mind says a million dollars will. Am I making any sense today? I hope so. I'm not looking at the numbers, but I will say they keep flickering, like leaving and coming. I hope this is a good topic for us. I love it. 
By the way, Melanie says, me too, Stuart. Learning to persist or let go is an intuitive skill. Yeah. Friends help us do that too. People you feel safe with, people you trust. I've noticed that because I've been telling you I'm working on making new friends right now. Thanks, Mary. Um, and so with some of, with one new friend in particular, like I'm really trusting, stretching a little bit and it's scary all the time. How would it be for you to consider the possibility that your friend is scared? We're not talking that, we're not saying that out loud, but to hold, you know? Thanks, my friends. I get a little insecure and this is me just sometimes I trust our connection too. Same thing where I just say, is this making sense? I want to know. It's okay. I think that's the coolest thing about us is we don't have to be so tight butted and all put together. And somehow that feels more real and more present than anything else. Isn't it true? Yes, this is always helpful. Thank you, Carrie. Um, so receiving. You have to take it all the way in. And let it, let it be here. Wow. Wow. Just wow. 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 I receive. I receive. Sometimes you can be in a rush, in a hurry, and so you don't answer the phone call. And maybe answering the phone call from the friend or the family member or somebody putting down the story and receiving the phone call and having a fun little two minute conversation will be hugely helpful in the moment now, but also later. Maybe later you'll avoid a three hour crazy pants, thought stream, guilt stream, or them calling you at the wrong time when the information is not going in. Do you have that where you're like, get me the hell off this call? You've got that one family member or somebody who's like, can be really out of body and you're like, what the hell are you even talking about? And you're just trying to get off the phone. You know, sometimes somebody will call and you're like, I'm busy. Something happens, but that's the moment to answer. You can spend a few moments on the phone and it's really, really perfect. Whatever it was that was needed to go in, either for you or for them or for you both, that was your moment. So consider these things because they're always happening. These miracles are always being offered. They're always being um, circulated and you're always being heard. The universe is always listening. And the truth is, if you really felt held and loved and you were relaxed as you could be, you wouldn't be freaked. You wouldn't be so freaked or stressed. You wouldn't be out of balance or out of body, you know, off center. And you would make clearer choices for your life and be more decisive about things. And also, whatever you are, like the perfect apartment or the perfect condo or the perfect relationship or the money or the opportunity, those will flow much easier because you're not focusing on all this bullshit stuff. See, this is bullshit stuff focusing, you know, does anybody do that for half a day about something like pantyhose, please, <laughs> please, or the dishwasher somebody loaded wrong or you know so receiving and if you do feel like you need to refocus on receiving that means it's going to be a good day because the love the healing the ease is always trying to it's always there it's not trying it's always being offered we have to come out of the stories. We have to come out of the upset. Just how it is. 
So, um, I love it. I think, you know, tomorrow or today I'm recording episode 100 for the podcast. 100. Uh, I, it's going to be great. I want to do it about miracles, by the way. And yeah, just receive, my friends, receive. Just be open to receiving. Think about before a star is born, that part of the sky is black. And I know, but you know, stars are born, whatever. But just think about how that goes. Black, black sky. Nothing's on the screen yet. But that space, that void, we've talked about the void here before. It's bringing stuff through. So when you look in your bank account and you're like, nothing's happening. What if you started to remake the vision? If you're unemployed right now and you're like, what the hell is going to happen? Remake the space right now. This is the void, baby. The velvet void. Thanks, my friends. <laughs> I need a letter, by the way. I have a few, but I mean, if there's anything you would like answered special, feel free to write to me. Yeah, thank you. It feels good to celebrate body of work. Thank you, Carol. That means a lot. You guys, you bolster me. You know, you might think I'm just saying the nice thing or I'm just, I'm letting her know I really feel that way, but I carry these things. I receive them. Um, I keep some, I can't, I wish I could screencast, screenshot all of these, but I keep a little, if you ever message me, I keep a little special album called Kindnesses. I read through those. It's so you know, I wish more people who ha- had a um, who do what I do would speak truth to how it really is. You know, for for me, I like I like telling you. Thanks, friends. Thank you very much. The Velvet Void, yeah. Maybe that's what I'll call the next episode, Stuart. I love it. It's it's so perfect because what's about to come through. We don't know. You know, it's like a portal. If I could be willing, and this is what I tell myself, if I could be willing to let go of my terror, my fear. There are so many things we could be afraid of now. But, you know, the truth is, before the pandemic, before all of the movements, I mean, sometimes I'm, I'm learning every day about the Black Lives Matter movement. I read... I study, um, I talk about it, and there's more and more and more. And sometimes it can feel so like, <gasps> you get to that place where you're like, it's too, it's like watching the news too long. It's too many things. Yes, if I could be willing to let go of my version of what's happening and what I need to do and um, how doomed we are. Sometimes you can feel like it's all so doomed. Open your hands and let go. This doesn't serve you, like Caitlin said. And now let me open my hands and receive. What is new here? What's new here? What's new here? And I hope that makes sense, because I'm like, what's new here for me is my commitment and my family. You're my family. We are a family. This is our love posse. That's new. The old story. It's just so old. It's like a crispy, hard turd. (laughs) I can't believe I just said that. But what are we doing? It has no value. It has no nutrients. There's nothing there. Stop. Just drop it. Thank you. I am super devoted. That is a beautiful word, devotion. And I want to be, that's my wish for myself, is to be 100% devoted in that direction of love, not devoted to my ego. Like you, you know, we we all have kook, kook ball ego stories. So, 
What are you going to do today? Open to miracles? Are you going to be open to surprises and beautiful visions? I tell you, I'm so touched by this letter I just received and the creativeness and the, the spirit of love in the message. It blew me away, you know, and that's why I share these things with you. Um, I have to keep pushing past my edge of like, this sounds like I'm bragging and it's not that. It's just like, this is how it happens. It comes in and will you receive? Yeah. Reframe your day, my love. And you know, you're so worthy. So I love you guys. It's the weekend. I hope you're going to do something beautiful. I'm going to go write a little bit and play in my garden a little bit and then you know I'm gonna record episode 100 and be excited and proud and you know I was saying this to Paula the other day I'm gonna try and really love my ego my little girl who's like it sucks <laughs> hang up <laughs> hit delete nobody likes it She's always behind me in the back seat yelling crap up front, you know, but I'm going to, you know, today I'm going to put her in the front seat. I'm going to hug her. I'll let you know. So how about we ring the bell and so many blessings to you. You know, I don't say it enough, but these are deeply healing sessions. Afterwards, it would be good to have some water and take a little walk around let yourself air out a little bit, you know, get something to eat. Yeah, this is a healing. Just because I look very down to earth and natural about it. These are big things we're doing. So I know. Thank you, too, friends. scared all the birds off with that. Amen. I'm going to see you tomorrow, tomorrow morning.